This time I'm going to bring Shredder. The whole point of Shredders is to destroy some stuff. This is something I have never done before. I don't mean breaking things, I mean designing, printing and putting something that destroys something. Anyway, I did it and it works, as you saw a few seconds ago. At least in my opinion, this is one of, if not the most interesting thing I have ever made in this channel. Or in my life. So to get this project started, we have to go back to the beginning. This video is sponsored by PCBWay. Ok, so I need to 3D print all necessary things. The cutting plates and those things that I call bearings, I printed with my Creality Ender 3 S1 Pro. And for material I used yellow PLA. Some of the bars are a bit different yellow. Yeah, I ran out of filament that I plan to use for this project. The top and bottom housing for the shredder I printed with my Anycubic Cobra Max and I also used PLA. I chose this printer because first of all this printer is big and the printer has vulcanic nozzle, which makes the printing way way faster. Even so it took me 1 day and 17 hours to print this bottom housing. Nice. Those blue and pink gears I printed with my GDRAC iFast and for material I used ABS. I chose ABS only for one reason. Because I wanted those gears to be blue and they didn't have blue PLA. It's only about the color, ABS doesn't give me any mechanical benefits over PLA. In this, in this case at least. Ok, so most of the things are now printed, kinda. And we are ready to start assembling this shredder. I tried to use as less non 3D printed things as possible, but I still need two aluminium profiles. Those are 30 x 30 mm aluminium profiles. You should find them every hardware store who sells any type of profiles. By the way, this doesn't need to be aluminium, it can be also steel, wood, gold or uranium. By the way, all those 3D printed things you see in front of you are printed on the raft. This is not required except for gears, but still to prevent some type of problems in future, I use raft from everywhere. Basically, the whole assembly is to hammer all those plates and the things that I call bearings to the aluminium profile in the right order. Final product should look like this. First goes this bearing that is uh, located to the opposite side from the gears. Next goes six plates and it's important that they are on the right side and in the right order. On every blade is a number, 1.123 or 2.123. The first number gropes those plates into the gropes. So after I install 1.1 blade, next I cannot install 2.2 or 2.3. I have to install 1.2. And it also shows like what side they are like. For example, 1.123 are left if it depends which way you look, you know. But And the second number shows the order of the plates. So it's pretty simple. 1.1, 1.2, 1.3 1 and then again 1.1, 1 1.2, 1, 1, 1 and 1.3. 1 and the opposite side which starts with number 2, exactly the same story. By the way, this step is pretty simple, but a lot of hammer is needed. Right now you see me hammering those plates to the place and I struggled a bit. The fit has to be really tight and it is, so nothing to do about it. By the way, this is the first one. The next one I used a bit silicone oil to make them slide through the aluminium profile a bit easier. So if you plan to build this by yourself, keep this in mind. All six plates are now installed and it's time to force the last bearing in place. This didn't go as well as I hoped, because when I get this in place nicely and try to fit this to the bottom housing, obviously this wasn't on the right place, because it just didn't fit there. The problem was the small gaps between the blades. I tried to avoid those as much as possible, but I didn't do the best job. I guess. So only solution for my problem is to print new bearing with fixed measurements. Meanwhile I had to get rid of the old bearing and I just cannot pull this off. It's absolutely impossible. So only way to get rid of this is something like this. From one side I got 0.5mm material off and I also added this little negative extrusion. If needed I can push the screwdriver in there and push this away from the blades, if I hammer the bearing too deep. Also I added some extra clearances to make this bearing move a bit smoother. Anyway, when the bearing is there happily, it's time to install the gear. As you see, they are different. This doesn't really matter which one goes to which side. Just keep in mind, this one that doesn't have this extra inner gear will be slave and the other one will be driver gear. So off camera I finished another one. So the biggest part of the assembly is now actually done. Now I have to only place those plates into the bottom half of the housing and then close everything with the top half of the housing. Hold up, wait a minute, something ain't back. For now it seems to slide pretty smoothly. Before I screw everything together I also added a shitload of grease. I also added a lot of grease to make the movement even smoother and prevent any wearing. It's PLA plastic after all. And finally I screwed the housings together and the shredder is ready. And it seems 
pretty pretty smooth. I for now I'm happy. Okay, the shredder is ready, but the project isn't. Actually, we are halfway there. We also need something to spin the shredder. So I'm going to drive the shredder with 1.775 DC motor plus 1.81 gear ratio. I'm not going to build the gearbox on camera, but I made a little animation to understand what is going on. Big thanks to PCBWay for sponsoring this video. PCBWay is known for making PCBs at the low prices. But did you also know that PCBWay has excellent 3D printing, CNC machining, sheet metal fabrication and even injection molding service. Using this is simple as it can be. First upload your 3D model, select the material and they have huge option of this. You can even order 3D printed metal parts. Then you can choose the color or any specific settings for your need. I have ordered things from PCB Way many many times and they have always done absolutely excellent work. Also for this project I ordered an acrylic lead for the gearbox and it's absolutely perfect. If you need something that requires fancy and expensive machines or skills you don't have, just order your needed parts from PCB Way. PCB Way is your one stop solution. But for now let's continue with the project. I also 3D printed some mounts to secure the shredder nicely and strongly to the wood plate. The gearbox is ready and everything seems to work just fine. Also the lead, if you are wondering what it is, it doesn't cover much. I added the lead only to keep the lubrication not flying around to my room that badly. Also I use acrylic lead from PCB Way to see the gearbox what is going on over there if some problems occur. The power I will take from the 6 amp lipo battery. And I'm thinking we are ready to smash some shit. The round one is soft things. I went to my kitchen for rotten food and I did find some. Also I find one McDonald's dry aged cheeseburger. You know this is legit rock solid. Anyway, let's just get this thing. I know you are waiting, I am waiting, so let's go. This paprika just got stuck and I heard some popping noise. Because this was my absolute first test, I panicked and stopped the machine. But the whole situation was my bad. It took me a bit of time to figure out why this paprika didn't go through. It happened because I didn't run the shredder on max speed. I'm using TC motor, so if I run the motor slower, it also gives less torque. I also did the same mistake with the cheeseburger. But actually here I figured this out. When it got stuck, instead of turning the machine off, I increased the voltage and instantly fixes the problem. From now on, I'm running this machine on the max power. So far everything has gone through the shredder with any problems. For my fridge I also find one garbage that doesn't smell really good and it doesn't look really fresh. So... So soft things, this shredder can handle with no problems. Like we see, everything looks pretty shredded. But what about a bit stronger materials? Let's find out I guess.
The second part of the testing disappointed me. First of all, those harder things, which are actually not that strong, completely stalled the shredder. The truth is, this is actually happened from the gearbox. It's really easy to see and hear that the gears are slipping. Maybe the 12 volt 775 motor with 81 gear ratio has enough power to smash those things. But if the power are not transmission properly, then this not gonna happen. Also the gears overall has worn out quite a bit. I removed the lead, then you can see better. But even so, let's imagine this didn't happen. I still believe there is too less torque to smash those small 3D printed things that I draw in there. If I use bigger motor and maybe increase the gear ratio a bit more, then the second part of the testing might be successful. For now, the shredder itself survived without any visible damage. That's why I believe there is way more potential in the shredder than we just saw. But the second reason why I'm disappointed. If you look those shredded things that make their way through, they are not really broken apart. Those things are rafts that I use for 3D printing gears. Only damage for those are little holes. So there is room for improvement, mainly from the power transmission. But still, I'm overall happy with this project, because softer things went through and they were completely smashed. At the end of this video, I can say this shredder works. And just keep in mind, real shredders are made with metal, and because of obvious reasons. My shredder is fully printed with PLA plastic. It's impossible to expect the same result from the real shredder that is made with proper materials. But let me know what you think about this project in the comments below. Also, if you haven't subscribed to my channel, then I hope you do. Big thanks to everybody who have already subscribed and liked my videos. Anyway, this is it for this time. So, see you guys really soon. Bye.